Hi friends, welcome to this part, part 17. We are looking at AWS Certified Developer Associate Real Certification Questions. If you haven't got a chance to hit the subscribe button, please hit the subscribe button. You can also click the join link to become a member and gain access to unlimited questions and knowledge base on cloud certifications. This channel is totally dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications, AWS, Azure and GCP. Let us jump into the questions. The question says you are trying to upload an object in S3 bucket and then when you are doing that you get 400 bad request error. Why do you get that? The answer for this is you get that because the object exceeds the maximum object size that is allowed because you are doing that through the put object API action. So you see this documentation your proposed upload exceeds the maximum allowed object size. So this is the answer. There is no logic to it. This is how the system behaves. It gives you these errors. So this would be my final answer. Let us look at this question. If there is a bespoke web application created on EC2 instances behind the load balancer. And this entire infrastructure is deployed using cloud formation. Cloud formation is infrastructure as a code. You can write a code, run the code, and EC2 instances and whatever objects are required, it will get created. So this is used to automate the creation of objects or infrastructure. The problem is when the development team runs new instances, it takes time for install and setup. What sequence of actions we should follow to improve efficiency? See if installation takes time, we have to pre-install it. You want to pre-install it, what do you use? You use AMI. You can create a machine image, everything is installed, whatever you want. You can create an image and release it to the market or use it. So for, from where do you take it? Do you take it from the marketplace? No boss. You create your own pre-built because you just need EC2 instances and load balancer. So you may go to the market and you may not find it. So you don't use it from there. You custom create it. When you custom create it, this is your answer. Once you do that, you want to use cloud formation. So cloud formation, what will you do? If you see this option, update the launch template resource in cloud formation template. Yes, this is what you need. You will launch a template in cloud formation and templates in that template. You can write all the services or applications that you need and put it in a template. So these two are the answers. Why not E is telling what you want to do is E is telling you to use cloud formation helper scripts to install and configure. So, so this is what you have helper scripts available. You can install the software and start the services, but here you don't want to just install because uh, you already have AMI. So why why would you write like to recreate this? We are already using AMI here, and using that you will have to just put this into a template. That's all. That's why this is wrong. And D is saying that you use AWS System Manager command to install and configure. See, System Manager the main purpose is to centralize the operational data from multiple services and automate tasks across your resources. So you can create resources such as like group of resources for your application and so on. So it is helping you with better management of the resources. It will not help you with installation. So that is wrong. This is my final answer. Now let us look at this. You have an API gateway. You have Lambda and it is a serverless application. Where should Lambda's function the session data should be stored between function calls. The where should the lambdas function session data be stored between function calls? So thumb rule remember this whenever you use serverless why you are using serverless because you want very fast response when you are using fast response in terms of database I would say DynamoDB is a database which gives you a fast response because there uh, you know you remember this when building applications like Uber uh, databases like DynamoDB is used inside. DynamoDB is a NoSQL database and you see this it gives single digit millisecond performance. So apps like Uber need that. So this would be my answer. The option B is wrong because it is telling you to use SQSQ. You don't maintain session data there. It is used so that two systems can send and talk data uh, talk to each other send data consumer and producer kind of applications and SQS is used to decouple applications. So here there is no use of SQS because that queue 
the data will get lost if you want to save the data put it in a database now c is also wrong because you are saying you will put it in the local file system so local file system it becomes very localized we want to put this centralized okay first of all second is the read and write would not be faster that's why c is wrong and d is telling you to use a sqlite session um see sqlite database is available in the marketplace it is not a standard feature of aws you can buy it from the marketplace but then uh, i would use something which is faster see sqlite is light but it is not fast dynamodb is fast plus it is fast because it stores in a no sql format reads and writes are faster so this is my answer if you have not hit the subscribe button please hit subscribe also please click the join button and with a small premium you can gain access to so many different content this brings us to the end of this part stay tuned this channel is totally dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications aws azure and gcp do not forget to subscribe and join